All right, this is lesson three in Canandaigua Academy's BC Calculus class, Unit 7. Today, we get to deal with a very, very famous rule. A very, very famous rule. This is L'Hopital's rule. Uh, the quick history on L'Hopital's rule is that L'Hopital's rule was not discovered by L'Hopital. L'Hopital's rule was discovered by a man named John Bernoulli. But L'Hopital wanted to include it in the very first calculus textbook ever printed. And so he went to Bernoulli, said, I'd like to use your rule in my book. He said, that'll cost you. Bernoulli uh, was paid by L'Hopital for the use of his rule. And since L'Hopital bought it, it's his rule. Yet again, the powerful. The rule is a very simple rule, and it is very, very helpful in finding limits, which is what we've been doing for the last couple of days. L'Hopital's rule deals with what to do when your limit is an indeterminate form, something where you're not quite sure where to go. And it goes something like this. Suppose that f of a equals g of a equals 0. Suppose that f and g are differentiable and therefore continuous on an open interval i containing a and that g prime of x is never zero on i, except for maybe at x is a. Then the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x is the same as the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x if the second limit exists. This is L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule says if I have a quotient and the numerator is heading to zero, the denominator is heading to zero, that is what we call an indeterminate form. Now, it turns out L'Hopital's rule works for all sorts of indeterminate forms, infinity over infinity. Uh, we'll get into those in a little bit. But the big deal is th this 0 over 0 is an indeterminate form. If we don't know what to do, which 0 is bigger? Well, then, we take the derivative of the numerator, the derivative of the, nom the denominator, and try again. If that second limit exists, it has the same value as the first one. That's a crazy notion. That is a crazy notion. I'm going to illustrate. Limit. X approaches 0. Sign x over x. x gets closer and closer to 0. This gets closer and closer to 0. This gets closer and closer to 0. 0 over 0 is an indeterminate form. So what do we do? We take the limit, sine x over x. That's the same as the limit of the derivative of sine x over the derivative of x. That's much more doable. Numerator gets closer and closer to 1. Denominator stays 1. That's 1. Well, how the heck does that work? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look at sine x and x. So I'm trying to figure out what happens to the quotient near x equals 0. What happens to the quotient of those things? Well, we can just zoom in a little bit, try to see what happens to the, the sine x over x, what happens to that quotient? Well, I don't know. Let's just zoom in again. It's hard to tell, but it looks like 
the quotient of the functions is 1. Looks like the functions are the same close to x equals 0. Intuitively, it makes sense. This is that argument we talked about early in the year on what we called local linearity. We talked about local linearity. If you zoom in on a function over and over and over again at a particular point, that function becomes its tangent line. And since the function becomes its tangent line for all practical purposes in a small interval, then the quotient of two functions should be the quotient of the tangent lines. That's the informal argument. And that allows us to do all sorts of fun stuff. We did this one early in the year. We had to do it where we multiplied by 1 over 3x and then 5x over 1. This was one of those we had to do by using the fact that sine of x over x approaches zero, approaches 1 as x approaches 0. But no longer, I've got an indeterminate form. I've got a 0 over 0. So I just take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, and try again! So that, that's three-fifths. That's, I mean, that's, that's the game. Stick with trig for a moment. x sine x over 1 minus cosine x x sine x over 1 minus cosine x. x sine x clearly goes to 0. 1 minus cosine x clearly goes to 0. And so what does that do? So here we go. The product rule is so much fun. It's 1 prime 2 plus 2 prime 1. Well, what happens to that? The numerator gets closer and closer to 0, and the denominator gets closer and closer to 0. That is still an indeterminate form. But L'Hopital's rule applies to this. So we just take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, and we try again. Bottom is easy. Numerator is the product rule is so much fun. It looks like that, I'm pretty sure. So as x gets closer and closer to 0, the numerator gets closer and closer to 2, the denominator gets closer and closer to 1. This last limit, the, the green limit is 2, so the blue limit is 2, so the original limit is 2. And it doesn't just work. L'Hopital's rule doesn't just work with 0 over 0. L'Hopital's rule works with all sorts of indeterminate forms. Anytime you have an indeterminate form, you can use L'Hopital's rule. So x approaches pi over 2. This numerator heads off to infinity. The denominator heads off to infinity. Infinity over infinity is indeterminate. Which one is bigger? So we're going to say that that limit is the same as the limit of the derivative of the top or the derivative of the bottom, and we try again. A little bit of trigonometry, those cancel. Tan x over secant x. Tan x over secant x. Uh, tan x is sine x over cosine x. Secant x is 1 over cosine x. So this is the same as sine x over 1. And I know what that is. I know what that is. One more. One more. This is an indeterminate form. This is zero times infinity. Well, undefined. So 
what wins out, the zero or the undefined? And the answer is very simple. We can only apply L'Hopital's rule to quotients. We need this thing to be a quotient. And the way we do that is we take that secant x, and instead of multiplying by it, we divide by its reciprocal. And the reciprocal of secant x is cosine x. We can apply L'Hopital's rule here. This is a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. And so he takes a derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. And we try again. And this turns out to be negative 1. A couple of things for you to think about between now and when we gather. When we gather next time, I'm going to want to know what that is. Those are two functions that go to infinity. What happens to their quotient? And I'm going to want to know what happens here. Because the, if, if the top function was an infinity over infinity, this is an infinity minus infinity. What the heck happens when you have infinity minus infinity? Those are things to consider between now and the next time we gather. Enjoy whatever time there is until then.